The second section associated with Chapter 8 is going to be talking about some waves and wave properties. Uh, I'll make reference to a lot of water waves, but you'll hear me talking about sound waves, but again, looking specifically at our mechanical waves. Because a wave is a disturbance, we know that it carries energy. For example, if you drop a rock into the middle of water, you can see those ripples going out. If there was a leaf that was floating on that water, you would see the leaf rise up and fall down. The other thing is, let's go ahead and talk about a sound wave. You know that if somebody raises their voice, that's more energy. If somebody has a very soft whisper, that's not very much energy. So all kinds of waves, both compressional and transverse waves, are going to be carrying energy. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the properties associated with waves. We'll go through the vocabulary first and then I'll make reference to it on a picture on another slide. Rest position, that's how the medium appears without a disturbance. For example, if you look at the water and it's a, a clear, calm day, not not windy or anything. If you've been at the lake, it just looks like the water is like glass. Okay, No energy is in that water. Just smooth as can be. Crest. Once that disturbance takes place, crest is going to be the highest point on that transverse wave. Trough. Trough is going to be the lowest point on that transverse wave. Amplitude. Amplitude is going to be a measure from that rest position, the middle point of the wave all the way up to the crest. Now, because a wave is the same both up and down, we can also measure from the rest position down to the bottom. Amplitude, the height of the wave, that's going to represent the energy of the wave. Think of this, if you were at the ocean walking along the beach and a wave came in and caught you about shin high, you would feel it. But now think of this, let's say you ventured a little bit further out into the water and all of a sudden a wave came up and caught you about shoulder height. You know that there's a lot more energy in that bigger wave, most likely might knock you over, cause you to stumble, things like that. Wavelength, that's going to be the distance between two parts of a wave, two parts of the same wave. So we might go from the high point to the next high point. We might go from a low point to another low point, but wavelength is the distance between two of the same parts or corresponding parts of a wave. If you look at the picture, okay, highest point. Okay, we'll use this one here since it's labeled crest. Highest point is the crest. Lowest point is going to be the trough. I labeled it as rest position in this graphic. It's called equilibrium. Uh, think of this, if I took a slinky and I stretched it out and I don't do anything else, it's going to be running along that straight line. But the minute I disturb it, okay, move it back and forth, you get these high points and you get these low points. Again, crest and trough. Amplitude, that's how tall that wave is. And I like how this one represents it too. I showed you that it's from this midpoint here, also down to the bottom, okay, because the waves are going to be the same, both high and low. So we can measure up to the crest or down to the trough. Wavelength, if I look at this one here, they are going from high point to high point. This is also wavelength, low point to low point. This is also wavelength. Okay, I'm going to go the front side of this wave to the front side of that wave. All of those distances, here to here, here over to here, and then high point to high point, those are all going to end up being the same. If we go ahead and we put this wave in motion, uh, we count the waves, see how many times when we drop that rock in and you see the ripples going out. That's going to be frequency. It's the number of waves that pass a point in one second. Okay, And it's going to be dependent on uh, how close those waves are or how far away way those waves are or wavelengths are from one another. Okay, But frequency is putting that wave in motion. Okay, Getting it to go past a point in one second. Frequency is going to be measured in hertz. One way of saying that is if I have one hertz, one wave passes in one second. If I have 25 waves in five seconds, okay, remember waves in one second. 25 waves, five seconds, so we have five hertz, which is also the same as saying five waves each and every second. How are wavelength and frequency related to one another? Well, if we go ahead and we look at the graphic, okay, you're going to find out that frequency and wavelength are going to be indirectly related to one another. 
look at this okay this is a very small wavelength okay crest to crest or trough to trough we have these waves that are really close okay so let's say this is our one second so let's count one two three four five six okay now let's look at this one here we only have three waves going by this point in one second but also look here the wavelength is very large but not very many waves so when the wavelength was big okay when the wavelength was big the frequency was very small okay large wavelength not very many waves here we have a small wavelength but we have a lot of waves that are going to be going by and again that's going to be an indirect relationship one variable goes up the other variable goes down so wavelength and frequency are indirectly related